Hey friends, thanks for tuning in again. My name is Noel. I'm doing another segment on synergetics in the unified field. Just wanted to go over briefly the formulas that I discovered. The sphere formulas for closest packing unit radius spheres had already been discovered. I did not know that till after I had discovered these formulas here. To the best of my knowledge, mankind does not yet have the vector formulas. The vector formulas are the kissing points between the spheres. That's where a sphere would transfer its energy. That's also where a vector's magnitude of force would be holding those spheres together, for instance. So, once again, these vector formulas, I'm pretty sure are brand new to mankind's mind. I hope you'll enjoy them. The reason so they're so important is because what I found was that at certain frequency measures, these polyhedrons can be broken up and the vector totals represent identical measures to the forces that we're finding inside the nucleus of the atom. We're finding out with these formulas we can ratio Planck's constant and the fine structure constant, the proton's mass, the electron's mass, and the neutron's mass with one another. We can equate these with one another in whole rational units. It's very, very interesting. I want you to notice the symmetry of the formulas. You probably have never seen these in any geometry classes. I know you've never seen them together like this. Notice the symmetry. And notice that they all begin with a frequency to the third power plus a frequency to the second power plus a frequency, etc. Notice the symmetry where the tetrahedron always has frequency to the third power. The octahedron always starts at four times frequency to the third power. Cube octahedron, which is also the vector equilibrium, is 20 to times frequency to the third power, including the volume. Cubes, 24. Tetrachidecahedron is 96, and that truncated tetrahedron, 23. So these are like their prime originating values. It's very beautiful to see that the volumes all interrelate in whole rational units when you use the tetrahedron as the base unit of measurement. Now that tetrahedron is the first insideness and outsideness in the universe. When you begin to expand that prime singularity uh, of Einstein's, or that Big Bang, omnidirectionally, symmetrically, the first inside and outside is that tetrahedron. The first time you can make a tetrahedron is that smallest four spheres or four vertexes going together. When this tetrahedron expands omnidirectionally, you can fractionate it in all the rest of these, fractionate it in all of the rest of these polyhedrons. If you're in geometry class, you want to use a little bit of a cheat because you find it difficult to use the current formulas in order to find out the volumetric measure of the tetrachidecahedron, the truncated tetrahedron, truncated tetrahedron, the octahedron, the cube octahedron, or that tetrahedron. All you need to do is follow these synergetics formulas. Make a real quick, for, real quick shortcut for you. Say, for instance, you want to find out the volume of the tetrachidecahedron, and it's two inches to the edge length. These are all regular ones, I must uh, explain. All the edges are the same length. Put two in if you want to find a two inch volume, 2 to the third power times 96. That's going to be your tetrahedral volume. Now you multiply that by 0.11785 and that'll turn it back into cubes volume. Your teachers will say, hey, that's correct. Good job. How'd you do it so fast? And you can show them. So what's interesting about this work is that by breaking up the vector counts and seeing that they ratio Planck's constant, the fine structure constant, and the masses of the electron, proton, and neutron, this in a way unifies the field of these three different uh, modalities of operation and investigation which humans are using. I'm going to close it by just reading a little bit from uh, Buckminster Fuller. I appreciate you guys tuning in with me again. I hope that this is becoming intelligible. I'm hoping high school students will be able to understand it. It's based on whole rational units, quantity units. So, Bucky says, in Synergetic Section 986.112, vectors always represent energy forces of given magnitude, operating at given angles upon given entities at given loci. Remember, these loci, the location, the spheres that these vectors are operating around. Vectors do not occur singly. They occur only as the family of forces interacting in any given physical circumstance. I say, 
When we count the total number of vectors in synergetic structurally stabilized polyhedrons, we see a family of energy forces which relate identically to the forces within the nucleus of the atom. See, so that's the importance of my work. I'm trying to show some interesting numerical interrelationship patterns. Bucky says in 964-31 synergetics, in the quantum and wave phenomena, we deal with individual packages. We do not have continuous surfaces. In synergetics, we find the familiar pattern of second powering displaying a congruence with the points or separate little energy packages of the shell arrays. Electromagnetic frequencies of systems are sometimes complex, but they always exist in complementation of gravitational forces and together with them provide rational integer characteristics of all physical systems. Little energy actions, little separate stars, this is what we mean by quantum. Synergetics provides geometrical conceptuality in respect to energy quanta. So synergetics provides geometrical conceptuality, or way of thinking, in respect to energy quanta. But he goes on, he says in section 400.56, all systems are polyhedra. All polyhedra are systems. All polyhedra are systems. Proofs must proceed from the minimum whole system. He goes on to say in section 1052.361, proofs must proceed from the minimum whole system to universe and the differentiation out of universe of the special case conceptual system. Proofs must start from the minimum something that is the minimum structural system, which is that tetrahedron we're talking about. All geometrical and numerical values derived from fractionation of the whole. That's real powerful for us. So all of our geometrical and numerical values derive from fractionation of the whole. I want us to be aware just of one last thing. When we're saying something like, oh, the area is 3 square inches, or the volume is 12 cubic inches, or 12 cubic feet, we're doing ourselves a great disservice, because in my other videos and in this one, I explain very clearly that we're using the words incorrectly and we're programming our minds to think of squares and cubes as shapes by which the universe might create building blocks to structure itself. But it doesn't use cubes to structure itself at these most infratunable and finite levels. It uses self-stabilizing inter self intertriangulated energy patterns. Let's try and just say third powering and second powering instead of saying squaring and cubing since we now understand that universe progresses itself in second and third powering progressions uh, or accumulates itself in second and third powering progressions in other geometrical figures than squares and cubes. So I appreciate you guys tuning in with me. Hope you watch my other segments. Remember this unifies the fields of quantum mechanics, particle physics, string theory, and relativity theory, and whole rational units. Appreciate you tuning in, you guys. I'll come back soon. Okay.